what I did was creepy. Just like, I just didn't know any better. Yes, you did. You're a good human being. You know how to treat other human beings and how to not call women out for things they shouldn't be called out for. It was a giant mistake that I made. A man using misogynistic language, slut shaming. I know that a lot of people in Bachelor Nation had a field day. But does it matter what her motivation was? I mean, it's, it's, you still did that. I told her about it before I told Denny. About the dream? It, yeah. Oh. You were with her at the time? Yeah. Oh. Here's a real serious question. <laughs> <laughs> if so, your job's over. Oh my word. We are joined by reality Steve himself, Steve Carbone. Hello, Steve. Wait a second. Did you just introduce me and not call me Steve Tacos Al Carbone? There's a first time for everything, Steve. And I feel like we need to begin this with the elephant in the room. And that's not on a joking tone. So let's go ahead and address everything and then we can get to the fun stuff. So let's start with this. <laughs> Steve, do you feel like you've been canceled? No, no. I do believe that if I didn't work for myself and I wasn't my own employer and what happened and I was writing for like another website, just name any website and I was writing for them. And when they, whatever hired me, I never informed them of my past writings. And then this stuff came up. I believe I would have been fired. Yeah. I think one thing that was also a little bit different was I don't have a pay service. Like if my stuff was behind a paywall, I surely, I think people would be like, Oh, I'm not subscribing to him anymore. I'm going to unsubscribe, but I don't everything. I provide a free service for people that they can choose to look at or not. So I just assume that people are still going to want to hear spoilers. When we did your podcast last week, you mentioned that you had taken down the misogynistic writings that you had done. And just now you mentioned seven or it was seven or eight years ago. When was the last time that you wrote in that tone that was offensive? I mean, it, it's tough to pinpoint a date or a, or a season, but I believe it was 2016. That wasn't that long ago, but did you erase whatever it was in 2016? Yeah. Everything that I've written pre-2016 up to 2016 is now eliminated, is, is now off my site. It's not there. I feel like social media now is holding us accountable in a way that we never had to be held accountable before. Do you agree? For sure. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I've, I've thought about this a lot, obviously in the last two months, there's a lot that's been going on. And my, my biggest thing has always been not only why was I allowed to say that? I mean, obviously you're allowed to say anything you want, but why was it accepted? And why wasn't I, why was, why did people come down on me hard back then when I was saying it? And the bottom line is, and this isn't an excuse, but the bottom line was, this is more, this was more accepted in 20. 13 and 2012 and 2014. It just was in the, in the public and in the media, you were allowed to get away with some nasty, awful things. We talked about it on my podcast, the stuff that Perez Hilton would say, the stuff that the superficial would post. Um, what would Tyler Durden do? That, that website where it was just nothing but taking celebrity stories and objectifying the women. And it was, was just, say. and yeah, and mostly the women were the ones who fell victims. Yeah. To that and it, and it. it's just, it's like, why? I mean, obviously the Me Too movement, is what put an end to it for sure. Back in the day, you know, when I was, when I read those things and I saw the things, you know, resurfaced of the stuff that I wrote, it's so cringeworthy and it's so embarrassing and so awful that you're just like, the only, the only thing you can respond to it is like, I guess I'm, I'm just so glad that's not me anymore. And, um, but when I'm writing it, I'm trying to put, I'm, it's very hard to put yourself back eight or nine years ago and think, what was I thinking at that moment when I said these things? It's in, it's in, there's no way to get an answer to that. But for me, the short answer would be like, I was just going along with the cool kids. You know, I was just going along with the crowd because it was accepted. And I, and I, to me, that humor was like edgy and got people to talk about things because that's what all the blogs were doing. And that's the only answer. It's a horrible answer. It doesn't make it right, but that's the short answer. If we're going to dive deeper into it, uh, the, it I guess it was just like, I just didn't know any better. Nobody ever told me it wasn't, there was something wrong with that, you know? Well, Steve, come on, don't say that. I was with you until that last part. No, I mean, you're but right, it's a lame excuse. What the excuse that you gave, it's a lame excuse and you acknowledge this is a lame excuse. I, I shouldn't have done that. But then to say, I didn't yeah. know any better. Yes, you did, you're a good human being. You know how to treat other human beings and how to not call women out for things they shouldn't be called out for and make comparisons I, to be made. I do now. I don't think I knew back then because nobody told me otherwise. You were in your 30s, Steve. 
I was in my thirties, but I was, I had the humor of a 20 year old. Like that was the thing. Like it was, I was doing it, not knowing or not even thinking because it was just accepted. And then my, my question is why was it accepted? Why wasn't, why wasn't like, if, like if I put it this way, if I were to write that right now, everybody that reads my blog would be emailing me within four seconds of it going up. There's more to, of an awareness now, of course, like because of me too, as you mentioned, but unfortunately this story is not new for most women, a man using misogynistic language, slut shaming in some type of powerful role, using that to his advantage to flirt or you know, engage, befriend, not new, Yeah, not new. But then since this all blew up with the Demi stuff, what in your opinion was the most egregious of your actions? Oh, the writing, I think. I think what I wrote was, look, and, and, and you know, I, you're asking me for an answer and it's, I don't want that answer to mean like I'm diminishing the Demi stuff. You're just asking me for an answer to choose between the two and I'm answering the question honestly. I think because those were repeated over years and years. The Demi was literally a one-time incident and her and I, I don't believe had more, have had more than five texts since that ever happened, you know, nine months ago. It's not like this was a continuous thing. It was a one-time thing that never should have happened. Those writings went on for a year. I mean, that's what realitysteve.com was from the beginning up until around that time. Yeah. Well, for us, it's obviously easy for us to put ourselves in her position because in one way or another, we have been in that position where we've been made to feel a certain way by men, et cetera growing up, becoming the amazing women we are. Um, obviously that's not the case for you. You're a man, you've never dealt with this before and you were the perpetrator here who made the, the creepy sort of phone call. So when you reflect now, having heard, her having heard her accusation and then her reaction to your apology, where do you guys stand right now? There's no stance. Once she came out with it, I texted her an apology and heard nothing. So there's just, there's, there's nothing. Oh, so she's never directly responded to you personally. No, right. she'll go on, she'll go on podcasts and give her opinion on me and my apology and everything that happened. But, um, she hasn't, she hasn't acknowledged publicly or privately my apology to her. I kind of get that. I do too. You can't blame her for that. It seems to me that people's view of you overall is that you are, a creepy, lecherous man who doesn't respect women. Like this is what I feel like yeah. most people feel about you. And after this, that was, that was never brought up before the Demi stuff. Yeah. And then Brian, you know, and then Mike made a comment about, you know, basically calling me, it was either Mike or Brian, one of the two, because it came from that podcast. Actually, you know what? It might've been Joe. I think it was Joe on, on clickbait podcast, uh, grocery Joe, um, you know, just calling me a loser because I'm a 45 year old guy. Well, now 46 that spoils the bachelor for a living. Like if you're going to, if you're going to define me that way, like put me into a box like that, like that's all I do is I'm a 45 year old guy that spoils the bachelor. He's like, what a loser that guy is. Like, what kind of life does this guy have? It's like, Joe, again, Joe, you've never read anything that I've ever done. You've never listened to any of the 239 podcasts that I've done. Like I'm a little bit more than that. So to just pigeonhole me into loser 45 year old that covers the show, I could call you a loser back for going on the show. Like, what are you, six, you know, are you a sixth grader with your, you're a loser for writing about the show? Do you have a sister? I think you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what has your sister said about this and about, you know, calling a woman and sharing like not a fantasy, it was a dream, but sharing this kind of intimate sort of X-rated situation. <clears throat> I, I think she just wanted to let me have my space. Um, I guess the better question would be about my, how my mom react because she's only, She's the female in my, I only have one sister and, you know, my mom. Um, so she's the one that actually, I've actually spoken to about it. And she said, um, you know, we had to talk about it. And I explained, because she wanted to know, like, what, what happened. And I gave her the full details. And, you know, she was disappointed. And, um, but being a mother, obviously, was supportive of me. And, um, you know, thought that things could have been handled differently. What do you mean? I, mean I, just th I just think the way it was presented was, was, was calculated. Came out at, it came out at a time when, I mean, there's, there's so much I can get into 
but anything I say is going to be looked at. You're making yourself a victim, Steve. And I'm just, it's just, I can't, but. Or you're belittling the, the actual victim. Or you're belittling Demi's accusation, which I can't, but which I don't want to do. But I'm just saying there's more to the story than what was revealed. But, but if we I, get into that, that then it just though? drags it along more. But does it matter what her motivation was? I mean, it's, it's, you still did that. So who cares if she wants to use no. it to her advantage for her podcast or whatever it is that you're saying? No, it has nothing to do with her podcast. I don't even know if she has a podcast, to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, the, the, the timing of it, um, how she presented it, how the other podcast that brought out the writings um, knew about it and chose to not say anything to me and was in cahoots with Demi about it. Like the whole thing, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, presenting the facts. That's the calculated version of it. But the event itself, what happened for sure, it was the wrong thing to do. But when you present it the way that um, some people did, it makes me question motivations. But look, I know that a lot of people in Bachelor Nation had a field day and loved the fact that it happened and were happy to tell that story and happy to express more on their podcasts about it. So, you know, let them have their fun. Um, they loved, they enjoyed it. It was very clear if you listen to any of their podcasts. Um, my thing was just, if you want to accuse me, which is fine, just don't go do the same thing yourself, which is exactly what they all did. So it just seemed a little hypocritical. Mm -hmm. They called you and shared their sex dream with you? No, I'm talking about the news in general of how they exaggerated the story to fit their narrative, which is exactly what they don't like me doing when I talk about contestants on the show. Oh, so okay. if you're going to tell me, Steve, you're the big bad wolf in this franchise, you out contestants, you say things about contestants that sometimes aren't true. Absolutely, 100%. I didn't do it maliciously. But when I report stuff on contestants that happens to be negative, if you don't agree with it, which a lot of the contestants in Bachelor Nation don't, perfectly fine. And that's where I've made the change in my coverage. But then don't go do it yourself, which is exactly what they did to me when they took this story and talked about it. Well, I think when we talk about it in that way, they look at you as a man who holds power, as Demi has said, and you know, you've said you didn't realize that you had that power. They look at you as their nemesis, a lot of them, because you know, you're a critic and movie critics or bachelor critics are looked at as, you know, you either have to win this person over or they're your enemy. And so I think in what you're saying, it, it doesn't really matter is my point. Of course, they're gonna, you know, if there's something negative about you now, of course, they're gonna try to play it up because maybe you've said something nasty about, about them in the past, but that's kind of diminishing the actual issues, right? If we talk about that. So let's move beyond that. In the age of the Me Too movement, were you expecting your behavior to get called out? It had just been so many years. I guess I just, it wasn't on the forefront of my mind other than I had addressed it numerous times in my writings and on my podcast. Like when it came to the forefront and a certain podcast was given my screenshots and we're like, holy yes, this is what this guy used to write. For them, it was them seeing it for the first time because they don't read my site. For me, it has stuff that I had addressed with my readers numerous times. And I had said numerous times, I mean, it's not like I sat there and read old writings and said, this is what I used to say. I just said, I absolutely hated the way I used to write. Is there any part of you that's actually grateful for the reality check? Oh, for sure. It was helpful in that I, you know, like I said, it's been years since I've written like that, but it was helpful in that it's out there. And now I don't have to ever worry like I'm like pretending like I'm hiding something because not everybody hears everything, reads everything I write or listens to every podcast. So they might've missed it in the numerous times that I addressed my past writings were horrible. So I guess that, that helps in that it became, you know, news out there where people are like, okay, I get it now. I get that this guy has changed. So moving forward, you say you're just going to stick to the spoilers and you're not going to be outing people for this and that and sort of giving your own opinion about, you know, posing for Playboy or things of that nature. Yeah, I'm just going to stick to spoilers and what happens on the show. And if I find out something that happens off screen, if it makes it to an on screen storyline, then I'll bring it up. Yeah. 
Well, we are in, we're about to be on uh, episode three of Katie's season. Have you monetarily been affected by this scandal? No. What I'm doing right now is just informing people of things that they're not getting anywhere else. Like if you basically original content, if you have original content, people are going to, people are interested and they're going to want to see. And especially when it comes to this show and spoilers. And now that they're currently filming Bachelor in Paradise, I'm giving updates on what's happening in Bachelor in Paradise filming, which is about three row ceremonies in right now. Same thing. All right. Last thing on this topic. Um, there are many people calling you a creep, saying you've always been a creep. He's a creep. He's canceled. Drop him. I, we can't believe you guys are talking to him still. Why are you still in cahoots with, with reality, Steve? What is your response to that, to the people calling you a creep? What are you basing it on? Do you know all the facts that you're basing it on? And if that's your take, nothing I'm going to say is going to change your mind. I can sit here and stomp my feet up and down and throw a temper tantrum and say, you're wrong, but it's not going to change anybody's mind. If somebody already has in their mind that I'm a creep, nothing I say is going to change their mind. They can say that, well, I want to see you do this, 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 and this. I've changed. You know, in the beginning, it was like, wow, you know, you're getting called every name in the book, pervert, creep, sexual predator, every sexual related name you can think of, of a negative tone I was called in those first couple of weeks that the story broke. But then I just started to realize none of these people read me, have read me, and they don't know me personally. So I can't sit here and take what they're saying personally. What I did was creepy. I just, you know, it's a, it was a one, it, like I said, it's a one-time incident. If that makes me a creep for the rest of my life in somebody's eyes, I, I, there's nothing I can do to change it, uh, their mind, because they don't know me. Um, so that was a one-time I, situation. You've never called anyone and done that before the oh the oh, the demi stuff demi stuff um correct well i take that back demi was the oh, demi was somebody that um i did that i had no relationship with whatsoever like i had never met demi in my life we've never had any sort of you know flirting back and forth it was just i was like i let feel but somebody that i have been with and at flirty with yeah so i don't want to get caught on a technicality here yes I have told that to somebody I have been with yeah um but Demi no that was just that's why like I said it was creepy it was a it was a giant mistake that I made and we all you know I, God, I hate when I say that's such a generic like we all make mistakes but we're not perfect and I screwed up and I and admit I screwed up and I never should have done it I apologize to Demi um I reached out to others that were affected with by with the by with the writings and um you know, all I can do is like, people are like, you did this and they're on my case for it. And it's like, okay, so what can I do to make it better? One, delete everything I ever wrote. Two, not continue to write like that, which I don't. And then three, just be better going forward. Um, I've, in, I've involved myself with a woman's shelter here in Dallas. Um, so yeah, just things here and there that I think show that I'm not this monster that I was made out to be. Well, that's great. On behalf of women, thank you for that. <laughs> That is a step in the right direction. <laughs> As we said on your podcast, you know, every experience that we have had with you, which has been solely this kind of a thing, has been positive, has been professional above all else and respectful. So obviously when we heard all this stuff go down, we were like, what? But we also hadn't read your stuff as we told you too. So anyway, yeah. we're happy to now. I think, about, I mean, that's kind of the way it was with a lot of people, like I said, because this isn't something I, and that's when I talk about the narrative, that's what I'm talking about, because what I did with Demi turned into everybody saying, oh, he must do this with every woman that he talks to. And he must do, this is the way he is. And this is the way he talks to everybody in Bachelor Nation. And he holds his power and he wields his power over all of them and forces them to tell him stuff. And if they don't, he's gonna out them. And it's just like, where did that narrative come from out of this? Just now when you were naming off women in your life, it made me think of your recent ex. Has she, did she reach out to you when all of this broke? Oh yeah. Yeah, we still talk, we still in contact all the time. She knew about it. I told her about it. I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know I did. Um, I told her about it before I told Denny. About the dream? It was, yeah. Oh. You were with her at the time? Yeah. Oh. Well, that was, the, that, was the other, that was the other thing I wanted to make clear was like, I was dating Kat at the time that I told Demi this. And I guess, you know, and I'm not going to put anything on Kat, but I guess one of the reasons they're like, why would you possibly say that to Demi? Was because I ran, because Kat thought it was funny too. She's like, oh, that's random. That's, that's pretty funny. 
and I just, for whatever reason, just in my head, I just thought, like, well, if Kat doesn't care, the person I'm with, why would Demi? But obviously that was stupid to, to think that. But yeah, Kat knew. Um, it was something I brought up to her. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just like I said, just stupid mistake. It'll never happen again. All right, so now let's close that book and open a more fun chapter. <laughs> About chapter Katie of fun? Season. Yes, KD season. Okay, Steve, if anyone knows this answer, it's you. What is the real beef between Aaron and Cody? They were so vague. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You know, when, I don't talk about contestants' uh, backgrounds anymore. So <laughs> Nobody was on the show. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I, the thing is, I can't, again, I can't say it with any 100% certainty. Did I hear things about Cody from the second the cast was announced? Yeah, he's probably one of the guys I got the most stuff sent uh -huh. to me about. So I'm sure it's the same. I'm sure what I was told is the same stuff that Aaron knows about or was told and they run in those same circles. So, but to sit here and say it, that then turns into Steve, you're now saying this about a guy without any proof. And just cause somebody emailed you, it's like, okay, well, then I'm not gonna say it. Clearly Aaron and Cody were both cast on the show to have that moment that they did. I mean, it's clear as day. Production knew that Aaron knew Cody. Production knew that Cody knew Aaron. And I'm sure once production knew that Aaron didn't like him, it was just pushing Aaron to be like, well, why don't you like him? What did you say? But while it was a storyline on the show, Aaron still never gave a reason. He was just very generic with his answer and very vague of, what do you call You're unkind. I mean, how vague can you be when calling someone unkind? You're malicious. I don't like the way you handle situations. It's like. I was like this by the end. <laughs> Here's a real serious question. Is Carl the worst? <laughs> I feel like he is constantly on his motivational speaking. I don't understand the character that he is playing on the show. What is he? What is he? I, I, I can't imagine his motivational speaking business is going to take off after this. Oh, God, that's a no for me. That, that type of personality. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Steve, we don't do spoilers, so we can't get much more out of you at this point. However, I want to ask you, do you know the ending? No. Oh. The, the, the latest I know is who the final four are. And that's all I've released at this point. That's all you've and released. That, yeah, that's all, that's all that's out there on my site in terms of spoilers or my Instagram page is who the final four are. But what's in here? Do you know anything else? No, I don't know. Okay. Who, I don't know who won. Why is that crew person that gives you all this information so wishy-washy? Yeah, I know. Totes, right? <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a crew person because it was a crew person when I would get everything right. What else do we yeah. need to know from Steve? I don't know. I mean, I'll, you know, I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but Bachelor in Paradise is filming as we speak. You know, they are three rose ceremonies in. And if you go by all the past seasons, it's always been a six rose ceremony show. Mm -hmm. So they're halfway through filming. Um, I've heard some of the people that have coupled up, so to speak, and um, Wait, have I've released all the. Have they announced the cast? I don't even no. know. Uh, no, I, I have. I put the, I put out there the people that I know went down to Mexico, but there's two things. Number one, I don't know who original cast is because, you know, they're always bringing people in and out. And number two, it is possible to be flown down to Mexico by production and never get on the show. Some people have been in the hotel for like two weeks and the production says, you know what? We don't have a storyline for you. We don't have anybody for you to go in for. This happened. This guy really started connecting with her. We, we brought you in for him, but he's... It looks like he's coupled up, so we're not going to bring you in. So I have a lot of names out there, of people that I know went down there, and I know some of the people that have been given roses and the couples that have formed. Hey, our good friend Demi's down there. Oh, sorry, is that a spoiler? It is. Yeah. I was going to ask, give us one person, and you just did it. So, okay, right. so Demi's okay. down there. Yeah. Interesting. She likes to stir it up, um, and, she like, and she knows she likes, she has to be on for the camera. She's Demi from The Bachelorette. So yeah, she's going to go down there and definitely be a polarizing figure. She's not going to be like a wallflower sitting in the corner, you know, just kind of not doing anything. You know, she's Demi. She's she's loud. She likes to be the center of attention. And I fully expect that. I'm just not going to give my opinion on anything she says or does. I'll just report who she gets a rose from, who gives her a rose. And, you know, who, um, maybe she leaves the show engaged again, like she did um, two years ago with Christian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I think um, that makes sense. I think she would probably appreciate you not give it. Saying it. Yeah. yeah. How about our boy, Chris Harrison? What do you think? I'll ask you this. What do you think of 
you know, I'm sure I'm, maybe you've seen the stories or not about the celebrity cameo guests hosts for Paradise this year. Have you seen those? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've seen those. You know, it's like a, a rotating slew of people that are going to go down there. Um, and then they haven't said who's hosting Michelle's season. My guess would be they'd probably do Caitlin and Tasha again, just because it's a female and they're two former leads. It makes sense. But I think after that, going forward, and this is just me as a programming of this show, I think they need to settle on a, on a solo host that's, you know, a, a mainstay. I think people like, people don't like change and they're, they're forced to have a change because Chris is now removed from the show. And it's fun for Paradise and, you know, the next season because it's happening fairly quickly. Hard to nail down a permanent host. But I, I think they should go to a permanent host as soon as possible. The, the person, whether it's a guy or a girl, white or black, to be a host of this show going forward and that person that we can expect to see every season. Or would you like to see every season be a mismatch of, okay, well, if we have a bachelor, we're going to have a former bachelor alum, male. And for bachelorette, we're going to have, you know, the, you know, instead of Caitlin and uh, Tasha, we'll do JoJo or something like that. Like, what would you prefer? For me, um, I think that the host, without Chris, I think once Chris is removed, because Chris was the heart of the show, you know, he was the warm blanket, the sort of the comfort that's been there from the very beginning. Um, without him, I feel like the host position is such a throwaway position. We need someone to come in and say, this is the final rose. We need someone to come in and, you know, no, not really. I mean, sometimes it's necessary to move the story along or to cue the lead to tell them how they feel. Um, so I think having the same person do that is probably a good idea, but I think it should be minimized even more than what Chris was. I think we see that person two times an episode, maybe. I just don't think that it's that crucial. And how do you get past not saying Chris's famous lines? I know. Yeah, they can't they're going to have to come up with their own. Should shit. you choose to forego your own? Oh, you're never going to hear that again. I know. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it makes more sense for a woman like Tasha or a woman like Kate, Caitlin to come in and console her about her decisions to make on the show than a 50-year-old man, you know? Well, you know, and the 50-year-old man got off with a pretty great deal, wouldn't you say? <laughs> What do you yeah, think it is, Steve? I think, I mean, it's, you're reading now is, you know, mid eight figures, which to me, it says 50 million, 50 million, but even if it's lower, I don't think it's any lower than 20. So anywhere between 20 and 50, it's just like, okay, he'll be fine. Is Chris Harrison your source? <laughs> <laughs> if so, your job's over. Yeah, no, um, no, I've never had any interaction with Chris Harrison in my life. The only time I was ever close to Chris Harrison in my life was when his book came out, remember he did that rom-com novel or whatever, and um, he did a book tour. And one of his book tours was at the Barnes and Noble at the mall closest to me. And uh, I went and I didn't get in line or anything because there, like there was like a crowd of maybe 50 people in that Barnes and Noble. And I was like, maybe a hundred feet away, like outside Barnes and Noble, but I can see inside where he was standing and addressing everybody. That's, and that was the extent of ever being in Chris Harrison's vicinity. And go. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, we appreciate your time. Thank you for being candid and honest with us about the serious stuff. And then also a little fun with us here at the end. No, oh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on uh, my podcast last week as well. You are very Absolutely. welcome, sir. Hopefully we will talk to you soon and hopefully you find out the ending soon for your own. Yeah, hopefully. Keep, keep it updated. I'll keep everyone updated on realitysteve.com and on my Instagram page, which is realitysteve and Twitter, realitysteve as well. And anything else? <laughs> no. Oh, my podcast, actually. Yeah, the Reality Steve podcast. Still that too. <laughs> All right. Thank Perfect. you, Steve. Thank okay, you. thanks. Bye. Bye.